Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. Welcome to another one of these quick market updates and today we've got what could be one of the biggest risks for investors right now, the airline stocks and chasing some of those rebound opportunities you see in the stock market. And while I'm going to be focusing on airline stocks like Delta, United Airlines and American, you can really use this idea on any of those deep value industries in travel. Now, Nation, I get it though. Investors are looking at that stock market that's basically where we started at the beginning of the year with few real value plays. Then you look at a few of those stocks and airlines, cruise and travel that are still trading for 60 and 80% below their 52 week high. And it looks like an easy three or five X return. After what we're going to talk about today, you're going to see though that it's just not going to work out that way. Yes, there will still be air travel. There will still be people that want to fly, but it's not going to save some of these airlines. Okay, we will see a major airline bankruptcy this fall, and that's not just my opinion. Boeing CEO David Calhoun was asked that very question by NBC News last week, and he said it's the most likely outcome. So here I want to show you what to look for in those airline stocks. Talk about a few of these airlines specifically, like American, United, Delta, and Southwest. Then I'm going to reveal the only airline stock to buy right now and a strategy to invest. So Nation, obviously the airlines are in trouble here. Okay, The major US carriers are estimated to lose about $32 billion this year with about a 50% decline in revenue from 2019. You know, We'll look over some factors why I think it could be years to a full recovery and I've read analyst reports expecting even 2022 revenue is still going to be down at least 10% from last year. And the problem here, folks, is just that mountain of debt. United Airlines had over $12.2 billion in long-term debt through its last fiscal year, up $2.3 billion from the prior year, and had to pay out $700 million in interest. Now, we'll compare debt across the airlines in a bit, but, but United is going to double that debt load this year to over $25 billion and conservatively have to pay around a billion dollars in interest expense just in one year, just in 2020. Over the last four years, one of the best economic periods for the airlines, the companies reported earnings between two to three billion dollars. So with the lower revenue and higher interest payments that we're going to see, it's just not going to work out for at least one carrier, maybe even more than one. I saw some interesting analysis researching for this video and data on the break-even load factor for each airline, and this is by David Angoti of the Airline Transport Pilot. And the break-even load factor is just what percentage of each plane needs to be filled for an airline to break even on its costs. It's a great measure of efficiency in the airlines and how much of a safety margin do they have when they just can't fill up each plane. Here you see the break-even load factor on the right with Southwest the best off needing just over 72% of capacity to cover its costs. Delta and United are pretty close here, but then American is really the worst off needing to fill nearly 80% of each flight just to break even. And the problem here is that those flights aren't going to be even close to that capacity for more than a year. The four major carriers operate over 20,000 flights a day and every single one of them is losing money. It's not as simple as cutting those flights either. Airlines have to maintain a certain number of flights to, to keep those routes and the airport access. Even as the new daily cases of COVID-19 in the United States looks to be coming down, outbreaks in other countries like Brazil and Russia are surging. The world reported its highest daily cases just last week at over 100,000 new cases. Now that's just going to limit the airlines, you know, both on that passenger demand side, people just aren't going to want to fly, and the regulatory side of it for quite a while. International revenue makes up about 15% of the total for these major airlines, and that's probably going to be about 30% capacity over the next year. Even domestic demand though, you know, how many Americans are going to be taking flights if they have to wear a mask the whole time and with 40 million people filing unemployment over the last two months. Putting all this together, I did some back of the envelope calculations on the four major airline stocks. That's American, Delta, United, and Southwest. I looked up the market cap, which is just the market value of the shares, uh, how much cash the company has on its balance sheet at the most recent quarter, and how much long-term debt it owed. This is hugely important and something we've been watching over the last couple of months here on the channel. The number one thing you need to be watching right now, thinking about in your stocks, especially these hardest hit stocks, is that survivability. You know, things like balance sheet cash, debt to equity ratios, and, and what we'll look at here in this interest coverage ratio. The interest coverage ratio is made up of two things, the EBITDA and the interest that the company pays on its debt. We'll use EBITDA here, which is the company's earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. It's a measure of the core operating earnings of the company. The coverage ratio is that EBITDA earnings over the amount of interest the company has to pay each year or each quarter on its debt. 
So it's a measure of solvency. Can the company at least pay its interest on its debt and how much of a margin of safety does it have? So I did some analysis on the revenue earnings and the interest here, and this is for 2021. So what kind of a position the airlines are gonna be in in the next year? We see that American is the worst off here with earnings covering its interest payments just 2.38 times. Now United isn't far behind with just a 5.2 times coverage ratio. Really, it's only Delta and Southwest here that are anywhere near in the clear on being able to cover their interest payments. Now, all four major airlines took bailout money last month because they pretty much had to, but each one is telling its staff to expect major layoffs come October 1st, and there is a very good chance we see an airline bankruptcy then or a few months later. But I know that the potential rebound is just too tempting, right? Even if it takes three years to claw back at 2020 peak on most of these stocks, that would still be like an annualized 35% return. So you want to know which airline is going to get you to that point. And for my money, there's no one stronger than Southwest Airlines, ticker LUV. Southwest has the lowest break-even load factor, so it's the best able to weather that lower capacity. And the company has a great management team in place and an operating margin of 13%. Now remember, operating margin is just that measure of management efficiency. You know, how well does the company convert revenue into operating income? And Southwest margin is well above the 8% margin for American and the 10% margin at United. And really only Delta has a higher operating margin here with about 14%. Southwest also has the best regional exposure in that Southern US market where a lot of the states really had much shorter lockdowns and are the fastest to open back up. But the biggest factor here really for me was that Southwest is nearly debt neutral on its balance sheet. And let's look at that table again. Look at that five and a half billion dollars in cash reserve against just 6.4 billion in long-term debt. Southwest is sitting on less than a billion dollars in debt versus all three other major carriers with 18 billion or more net debt. That is going to give Southwest a lot of flexibility and survivability. And actually, there's rumors that it's going to be the first one to start consolidating some of these other airlines, actually buying up pieces of the other airlines when they go bankrupt or just merging into the others. And while I think you can buy shares here, I don't think you need to be in a rush to do it. There could be a relief rally when those layoffs and the strategic plans are announced in October and again on any vaccine news, but that could be months away. This is a long-term rebound play, and I think you can split your investment up here and to take advantage of any of those sell-offs. So if you're thinking on investing in these airlines, especially Southwest, maybe put a third of your planned investment in now, okay, uh, maybe another chunk be just before October and hold the rest for the first quarter of next year. Click on the video to the right for the three most undervalued stocks to buy right now. Three names that don't look like value stocks, but are. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.